Uh, John Barnes, welcome to you. Um, was this somebody been incredibly candid about an awful moment in their life, or is this beyond the pale? Well, first of all, I just want you to give me a few minutes because I believe that Neil, Liam Neeson deserves a medal, and I'll tell you why. Liam Neeson, I've listened to the whole, I've listened to the whole transcript. Liam Neeson was talking about his, his film Revenge, and he's talking about revenge doesn't do anyone any good. He mentions the fact that being brought up in Northern Ireland, he understands how destructive that can be. He went on to tell a story of a situation where a friend of his had been raped. Now, if you listen to everything he's talking about, he's talking about in the moment, and you can't blame Liam, Liam Neeson for thinking what he feels, because this is what, and this is a while ago, this is what society has shown him that black people do, Muslims do, this is what society has wrongly shown him, this is what the media have wrongly portrayed to him. So, in that moment, he said for a week, he was going around looking to, to, to kill a black person or a black, and he did that in quotation marks. Now, what he actually went on to say is that he was ashamed and horrified by the way he felt. Yes? He's not ashamed and horrified and wanted to commit the, the act of revenge. He's ashamed and horrified because that is what he thought about all black people. After a week, he realized he was wrong. That is what he said. I'm ashamed and horrified of the way I felt. Now, depending on how you want to spin this story, now it's about he was going to kill a black person. We, we want to ventilate That is not it. what I, I, say we want to what I got from that. About it. We don't want to spin it. I beg your pardon? I say we don't want to no, spin it. We want no, to think no. about it and ventilate it. It's an important subject. No, no, no. It, it, no, no, no. No, it's been spun. It's been spun because if you want to think about what he's actually saying, the context, which is why he then said to the lady, he said to the lady in his voice, I, um, I, I'm, I've got a particular set of skills if you don't report this in the way that it is meant. Now we're talking about, and he threatened to kill the woman. What he's actually saying is that he's horrified and ashamed of the way he felt. He went on to say that. That is exactly what he went on to say, which meant that he was ashamed of the way he felt, but you cannot blame him for thinking that because I said earlier with the whole Raheem Sterling talking about the influence the media has, you cannot blame people for thinking Muslims, because of Muslim grooming gangs, Jamaican Yadi gangs, then look at Muslims and Jamaicans in a negative light. And he's admitting that that is the way he viewed it. So, for this one black person who raped this woman, he then looked at it from the perspective of all black people are racist. Now, what he's actually saying is that this is what I thought, this is what I saw, and I am ashamed and horrified. And after a week, I said to myself, what am I doing? That is the, that is the reality behind it. As much as people are now jumping on this bandwagon of how terrible it is, what he's done, he's come out and he's told the truth. Now, the big problem we have is when people are afraid to admit the way they actually feel, everybody's now going to say, oh, if he had said, I have more respect for him now than had he come out and said, I viewed all black people as equal, I just view everybody as equal. What he said was, for a week, because of the stress I was under when my friend was raped by a black person, and because of what the narrative around black people and Muslims, and this is many years ago, surrounding the perception we have of them, I then wanted to kill every black person because as far as I'm concerned, as I was taught, black people are racist. He said he was horrified and ashamed for thinking that, but that is not the story we're telling. We now want him to be pilloried, we want us to never let him work again. People are now going to be afraid to tell the truth on how they feel. And I always say, we are all unconscious racist. And he said unconsciously for a week and a half, that's how he felt. We have people who've been doing it and keeping it quiet for 20 years, but as long as you don't admit it, then we think everything is okay. Now, the big problem we have is this witch hunt is now going to stop the process of people now, as in Rwanda, keep talking about our truth and reconciliation. Let's hold our hands up and say, I'm unconsciously racist. Don't blame me. This is what I've been wrongly told, which is what he's been said. And he's ashamed and embarrassed by it. So why is he being pilloried for it? There's so much going on there, isn't there? I mean, it's important, as you say, to see the context of the whole thing, not just look at the 15-second soundbite, see the context of the whole thing, try and appreciate the nuance. And, and in a sense... That idea of, of sharing thoughtfully, very candidly, a stream of consciousness, as you say, if we want to ventilate sensitive issues around race, then people have to be given the opportunity to do that. Others will say, now, hang on a minute, the 15-second soundbite is all that people actually will hear, and therefore, as a civilised society, it behoves people to react strongly, to think about... And okay, you'll see well, let's this talk on about... Twitter, and you'll well, see this on Twitter, won't you? People saying, take away his OBE, Absolutely. boycott his films, etc. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's take down the statue of Winston Churchill, who is a white supremacist and a mass murderer. He's a white supremacist, and let's talk well, about I've him talking just, about I've the just superior, read the superiority Robert, of the Aryan race. John, John Barnes, I've just finished the and, Andrew Roberts, the excellent Andrew Roberts biography of Winston Churchill, uh, where it's unequivocal. Yeah. I mean, you know, he held the views of his age, didn't he? Um, does it make him a less and impressive... And so did Liam Neeson. So did Liam Neeson. And is Liam Neeson any different? Liam Neeson, he held the view of not only his age, the age that is actually happening now. So what's the difference? How is William Churchill a hero when he spoke about 
he believes in, in, in gassing the lesser races, but he's a hero. And when Liam Neeson comes out and he admits that he was wrong in what he did, whereas Winston Churchill would never admit he was wrong, never, and he still, if he was alive now, he would still believe in the superiority of, of, of the Aryan race. But Liam Neeson, someone who admits that after a week and a half of thinking what he thought, he was wrong, which, well, is, which is fine as far as I'm concerned, we're now, okay. we're now um, we, pillaring him. OK, what we, I suppose what we can't do, I mean, the, 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 the Winston Churchill thing is, is, a, is a digression, isn't it? What we can't do is judge it's people, not a historical digression. figures, it's is judge historical the figures by the morality of today. That becomes problematic, doesn't no, it? Well, that's, we, exactly, we but, just, no, but you can't judge we, what happened 30 years ago. You can't judge Liam Neeson 30 years ago in terms of the way he actually thought, because he's not saying this is what he felt last week. He's talking about a long time ago, but, and he said after a week, he was horrified and ashamed in terms of what he felt. Well, one thing we can say with conviction, and you may accuse me of being a, a tad cynical for saying this, but we are... Uh, as a sideline to this, we are talking about the film, so there's some global publicity that's been generated. You get the sense from listening to what he's saying, it's almost a stream of consciousness. He, he's been led to a place he didn't particularly plan on Absolutely going not. to. But that's just that's my not instinct. From, that's Maybe not that's from Liam point But the effect is to have How could publicity that be from Liam for Neeson's the film. Point of view, people are talking about Liam Neeson never working again. You think he's done this because he wants to promote a film? Absolutely not. We're now talking about Liam Neeson never working again, boycotting his films, and in terms of what the perception people are going to have of him, and you think he did this on purpose? Absolutely not. Not from his perspective, maybe from the perspective of the filmmakers or that interview, the woman who gave that interview. And then to suggest, as I saw on television, the fact that when he gave his joke about, I've got a particular set of skills and I will find you, and we're having people, sensible, intelligent people now saying, oh, I really believe that he threatened to kill her, and that's supposed to be taken seriously. This is the influence that the media has in if they want a particular perception, and this is what has been done to black people for hundreds of years, the perception we may have of a particular group of people and the perception we now have of Liam Neeson based on something, from my perspective, it's positive. And he should be applauded for saying, yes, I was an unconscious racist and after a week I realised that I was horrified that I was. And people are going to be afraid of admitting it now because of what's happened to Liam Neeson.